What's up, my math scholars? We're doing 5.4 day two. Uh, if you're good at factoring, you should be good at what we're doing today, but we'll see. Um, we're going to multiply fractions, we're going to divide fractions, and we're going to simplify down our answer. So it should be fun. Happy Friday! Who's excited? Woo! Some of you just look really grumpy, Emma, <laughs> about being at school today. Were you banking on the snow day? Sometimes if you're anticipating a snow day, you stay up a little too late because you think you're getting a snow day, and then you don't, and it backfires. So that happens to me a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're multiplying rational expressions. So you don't have to write the property down unless you want to. That's up to you. But basically, if you have the fraction A over B, and you're multiplying by the fraction C over D, you multiply straight across the top, you multiply straight across the bottom, and you can simplify down at the very end if you want. You can actually simplify before you get to the very end. Um, let's think back to a long time ago in math classes. So I'll make a really simple fraction. How about 2 over 3 times 6 over 10? Do you remember these types of fractions? You multiply straight across the top, you multiply straight across the bottom, and you can simplify at the very end or you can simplify it earlier on, and it's totally a personal preference. If you want to simplify it early on, you can look diagonally. So you think to yourself, do 6 and 3 have any factors in common? I can simplify out a 3. 6 divided by 3 equals 2. 3 divided by 3 equals 1. And you can do the same thing with the 2 and the 10. Do 2 and 10 have anything in common? 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Multiply straight across the top, two. Multiply straight across the bottom, five. Okay? So we're going to kind of do a similar method, even though the problem looks a lot harder. So go ahead and write down this problem um, that you see here, and then we'll talk about what we, strategy we're going to use. So, again, we have two choices. We could have just multiply straight across the top, Multiply straight across the bottom, save the simplifying for last, or we can simplify early on. And I actually don't even care. So what do you guys want to do? <laughs> multiply and simplify last. Okay, so her vote was multiply it first and simplify last. Let's do it. Uh, 5 times 6 equals 30. x squared times x is x cubed. And then this would be y to the third. 2 times 10 is 20. Uh, there's 1x. And y squared times y is y cubed. Oh, I'm actually glad we decided to wait until last to simplify, because now I can sing my song. Bigger minus smaller put the answer where the bigger lived. So that only applies to exponents, so that only applies to my x's and y's. Uh, the 30 and the 20 are just normal numbers. You can slash out the zeros, because they're both divisible by 10. So it's 3 over 2. 30 over 20 reduces to 3 over 2. The x's, I would do 3 minus 1 and get 2, put that into the top. That's where the bigger one lived. And then look at that. All of our y's can just cancel. So they leave. That's our final. Do you want to see how it would have worked had I simplified it early on? Yeah. Because so I wouldn't write it down again, but maybe just watch this process. Okay. If you wanted to simplify early on rather than at the very end, um, you would kind of look at the 6 and 2, and you'd say, what do 6 and 2 have in common? Well, in fact, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'd slash them out and put a 3 in place. Um, I would probably slash out both of these x's, because they are in common. And then you've got 3 y's here and 2 y's here. 3 minus 2 is 1, so I can slash out all of these and only be left with y to the first power. Do the same thing diagonally this way. The x squared and the y really can't cancel, but the 5 and the 10 can cancel. 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2. And the only other thing you can cancel is this y on the top and the y on the bottom. Because you're allowed to cancel diagonally and up and down. You're just not allowed to cancel side to side. And that would give you your 3 and your x squared and your 2. With an area. I almost feel like that was messier. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's totally messier. It's probably easier to learn, lose a factor along the way. So actually I'm glad Lexi said let's just multiply and save it till the end. Alright, let's try this one. You guys just want to do it Lexi's way? Multiply and save the simplifying until the end? Okay. Well, that's what she voted. So get your butt out. Okay. 
Multiply straight across the top. 7 times 8 is 56. x cubed and x to the fourth is x to the seventh. y to the first with y to the third is y to the fourth. So that completes my top. Why don't you guys go ahead and try to multiply the bottom all by yourself? Eight x y to the third. How's that look? Awesome. And now we get to try simplifying. So 56 divided by 8 is 7. That was easy. Bigger or minus smaller. So it would be 7 minus 1 would be 6. Put your answer on the top. Bigger minus smaller. Put the answer where the bigger lives. Put it on the top. Here you go. Yeah? So for the last problem. Okay. Um, since we're implying that um, the actual number in the situation divide out. Um, couldn't the answer to the last problem be 1.5x squared? Sure, because 3 over 2 is the same thing as 1.5. I was thinking that could define x squared as well. No, because mm -mm. 3 and 2 are just normal, regular numbers. They're not exponents, so they're totally separate than the x's. Alright, how are we on this? we need more time to write it, or are we good? Alright, we're going to get into one where ones where a little bit of factoring is going to be necessary to be able to cancel and cross-cancel before we multiply. So we have a lot of stuff to factor here. Um, let's start with this top left. Is this the old-fashioned method? Is this the box method? Is it neither? I need some ideas. I'm trying to trick you. If there's only two terms. You cannot use the old-fashioned method. You cannot use the box method. All you can do is find a common monomial. So in this term, in this term, what is the common monomial I can factor up front? Perfect. And that would leave me with an x minus, oh, sorry, nope, a 1 minus x. 1 minus x. Okay. On the bottom, is this old-fashioned method, box method, or neither? Old-fashioned, awesome. So we need to think of numbers that will multiply to negative 5 and add up to 4. So that should be a piece of cake. You guys know? 5 and 1? Which one should be positive? The 5. Good. good. Alright, let's go up to the upper, upper right. Old-fashioned method, box method, or neither. Good. So what numbers multiply to negative 20 to add up to a positive 1? Five and four, make your five the positive one, and four the negative one, and then we still have this three x on the bottom just hanging out. So I know like the left two ways, multiply and simplify later. We're definitely going to simplify first on this one. We're going to look crossways. We're going to look up and down, and we're going to get rid of any factor that can cancel. So the first thing I'm seeing is this x minus five. Go ahead and slash them out. The next thing I'm seeing is the three x's. Last now, what do you guys think as far as our 1 minus x and our x minus 1? Are these the same exact thing? Here we can't put them out. They're not the same thing. But you know what? We can actually make them match each other. This is going to be a little wild. We're about to do something crazy. So this has a positive 1 and a negative x. This one has a positive x and a negative 1. So what I'm going to do up here is actually factor out a negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite it with a negative 1 factored out front. Positive 1 divided by negative 1 is a negative 1. And negative x divided by a negative 1 is a positive x. Now, I, I rewrote this as technically not there anymore. Let's erase it. What I have here in this group is equivalent to what I have in this group because they both have a positive x and they both have a negative 1. Do you agree with that? They're written in different orders, but they're the same thing. So we can cross them out now. So now when I multiply straight across the top, all I have left is a negative 1 and a x minus 4. When I multiply straight across the bottom, nothing, nothing, and nothing. So there's no bottom. So just to make the answer look nicer, the book did distribute that negative 1 in, and they have this. Isn't that weird? 
That whole negative one trick was kind of tricky. It's a cool trick. Yeah. So, below the X. Thanks, close All right, we're going to talk about dividing fractions now. But really, the only thing I would write down is what I have in the purple here. Basically, to divide fractions, you end up keeping your first fraction the same turning it into a multiplication problem and flipping the second fraction upside down. I think you learned this in fourth grade or something. To divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. Remember that? I really wish I had a song, but I don't. So if you have a fraction, you will turn it into a multiplication problem and flip the second fraction upside down. try this one. This one is almost too easy. I should almost delete it off. There's really nothing to factor on this problem and there's nothing that cancels on this problem. That's why I'm saying it's way too easy. But it just teaches you how if you're dividing two fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So I would keep my 7 over x plus 1 as is, but I would multiply by 2x minus 3 over x plus 2. And again, like I said, I can group this, I can group this, I can group this. But there's still nothing that's going to cancel out. So my final answer would just be 7 with the 2x minus 3 on top. And the x plus 1 with the x plus 2 on bottom. And I would leave it like that. If you really want to have some fun and foil it out, go for it. But we spend so much time factoring. Why would we want to foil it out? There's nothing that cancels. Alright, I think we pick one more and then call it a day. Sound good? It's Friday. It's hard to concentrate on a Friday. Alright, this will be our last problem. So when I write this in my notebook, honestly, I wouldn't even write it down as it appears originally. How do you think I would write it down? Right, I would write down 4x over 5x minus 20. I would write a multiply sign. Then I would flip the second fraction. So it would be an x squared minus 6x plus 8 over an x squared minus 2x. I think it's a good time for me to pause the video and have you try this one by yourself. to See how you do with your simplifying and your factoring. Okay, so so far I've done a little bit of factoring. I did common monomial factoring in my lower left, and I factored out a 5, leaving me with x minus 4. I did old-fashioned factoring method on the top right. That was a bit tricky. To multiply to get a positive and add to get a negative, you do want to go with two negatives. I went with negative 4 and negative 2. And then I did common monomial factoring in the lower right, and I just pulled out a common x. Now here's where it starts getting fun, because you can start crossing off common factors. You can cross common factors off that live diagonally, this way, diagonally this way, or up and down. So just yell out somebody you see that we can cross. I heard an x minus 4. I agree. I heard an x minus 2. I agree. There's actually one more thing I didn't hear. X. x. I agree. So now that we multiply straight across the top, all we have left is 4. And if we multiply straight across the bottom, all we have left is 5. I believe 4 fifths is it. Isn't that wild? So fun. So much factoring. Did you think that was hard? Andrew, did you think it was hard? No. Alright, your homework is the back side of what you got yesterday. So 5.4 day 2, it's a worksheet, and we'll get a pre-roll because it's a Friday.